Hello. Welcome to another episode of Boring Eastern Roman History. Very boring. Um, I want to talk about one of my favorite um, generals of Eastern Roman Empire. Um, just because basically what happened to him. I mean, he was nobody of like high importance, but uh, to me, he was uh, he's a bit fascinating. Um, his name is Calo Kairos Delphinus. Um, date of birth is unknown for him. We know nothing of this general prior to 982. His origin is unknown, though one modern historian, Wittow, or Widow, whatever you say his name, suggests he's of Iberian origin, but has no theory to support this. Um, if we dissect his name, Calo Kairos, it means beautiful authority, and his last name, feminized Delphina means woman from Delphi, which is an ancient Greek city and is derived from the word dolphin. So Simeon, the new theologian, calls Delphinus the condemned dolphin. He talks about his calm, which was still standing when he passed by it in the early 11th century. And this calm, as we'll explain later on, is where they erected uh, to warn other rebels when he was uh, crucified there. Um, it is most likely he did hail from, or his family did hail from Delphi, Greece, which makes logical sense since his last name, um, more so than, I don't know where Widow got from the Iberian, but like I said, there was no theory to support that. So neither is from the Delphi, Greece, but it would just make more logical sense if his family did originate from there. Um, how does Delphinus fit into this history? Well, the chief minister, Basil Lecapenos, known as the Perichomenus, ran the empire, as we all know, for Basil II. And to Basil um, came of age to run himself, which was turned out to be around 985 when he was about 17, turning 18. But he just got tired of um, Lecapenos. We'll see Basil. It's just basically Lecapenos was running the empire uh, for himself. And Basil was done with him manipulating and controlling him. So Basil starts unraveling this web that Lecapenos had spun for years. So he sacks Lecapenos and starts recalling and demoting these high office placed men, whether military or civilly in powerful positions to stall his own people. Um, this way it stripped all the power from Lecapenos. What it did was create a, basically a shit show and leads us to the rebellion of Bardas Focus and the Foci were a very powerful military aristocratic family um, at the time. And one of these men, one of these men that was affected by the so-called show was Calo Cairo Stelfinas, um, who was placed as a catapano of Italy back in 982 and held the rank of Patricos and Anthipatos. Um, Calo Kairos was recalled back to Constantinople by Basil II in 985, which he obliged and, and came back to the capital. What is sad is, was he wasn't recalled due to lack of achievement or military success. It was guilty by association. So this bad move on Basil II got rid of, as you'll see, a very capable um, military governor in Italy. Delphinus arrived in his post as a catapan around uh, June 11, 982 in Bari, where with fresh troops he uh, secured uh, Bari, handed back, handed it back to the imperial control from the brothers uh, Sergios and Theophylactus in around June of 982. Uh, later that year in December, Delphinus marches down and conquers Escoli from the Lombards. Um, in August of 93, he takes Trani and issues favor to Episepkos Rhodostamos. Um, we know nothing further from late 93 to 985, but we do know that he reinforced imperial control in these regions and showed he was a capable administrator and catapano that has stabilized control during this short tenure, which as we've seen in the past, a lot of catapanos had a lot of problems with dealing with uh, the Lombards. Um, we do not know at what capacity he served Basil II from 985 until he joined Bardas' rebellion in uh, February 7th of 987. 
Uh, most likely it was nothing of significant importance. Probably that's one of the main reasons why, too, he was so eager to join uh, Bardis's rebellion. Um, we do know Bardis Focus entrusted Delphinus as a second in command and with a portion of his army during his rebellion. Um, if we stop and take a quick look at Bardis Focus, we see this, like I mentioned before, powerful uh, family um, that loses um, Nikephorus II when he was murdered by John Tomiskis, who claimed the throne back in December of 969. Bardas at the time was governor of Chaldea and Col Colonae and holding title of Patric Patricos. He was deprived of this title and, and held in confinement in Amasia by Tomiskis. Bardas escapes from exile and goes to help his father and brother rebel, rebel against Tomiskis. Okay, so Bardis escapes from exile and goes to help his father and brother rebel against Tomiskis, um, who first acts fast and arrests. So Tomiskis, basically, he um, he really responds quickly and arrests and partially blinds both Leo and Nikephorus, uh, Bardis. Then, then um, Bardis is exiled to Cloas, for about eight years until Lecapenos returns him to his status and promotes him to Magistros and Domesticos of the Skolan of the East. Um, we have bad blood with the Scleros aristocratic family and the Focus family. Uh, Bardas successfully squashes the rebellion of Bardas Scleros in 979 when it started back in 976 when he was doing his rebellion. Um, Bardas did have a great career and was instrumental in the years of 980 to 986 for six years fighting the Muslims. Basil II wanted to weaken this threatened power. I believe that he felt by humbling this uh, Foké family. From um, And what he does is he takes away the Skolan of the East and demotes him down to a Duke of Antioch. Um, when Scolaris left his exile in Baghdad and gained momentum again, Another and started another rebellion. Basil II goes, okay, hey, let me reinstate this uh, Bardas. And um, he gets his old position back as Scolan of the East, and he f to fights Scolaris. But instead of fighting Scolaris, Focus meets uh, Scolaris, and they both decide, hey, let's join together and um, take over uh, and usurp Basil from the throne. But Focus double crosses Scleros and has him arrested and confines him to a castle of Tripolis. Then he decides, okay, he's going to do this alone. He doesn't need Scleros' help. This is how much bad blood there was between each other. He moves alone with having support of Asia Minor and other powerful aristocratic families who have been slighted by Basil and marches towards Constantinople. Um, here's where Kalokairos factors in. Um, now we do have Bardas's, um, older brother, uh, Nikephorus that was partially blinded. He was helping, um, Delphinus with this other portion of Bardas's army. And they just, they marched towards Chrysopolis across from Constantinople. What they're basically going to do is, uh, block the grain that's coming in, in um, to the capital via Asia Minor. So Stephen of Tehran has Delphinus as a magistros. I wonder if this title was bestowed on him by Bardas when he was proclaimed emperor, emperor by his men, or if this was sometime during um, his couple years of just being in the capital by Basil II. We're not sure, but it's just an assumption. Uh, Bardas does take his army and marches to Abydos, and laid siege to it in 988. Unable to take it, he leaves uh, the brothers Leo and Thignostus Melissinos in charge of continuing laying siege, but they're unsuccessful. Okay, so then we have Bardas's son, who's also named Nicephorus, confronts an imperial army led by Gregory Terenides, and this was at Trevisan. So Bardas sent his son Nicephorus to basically. Um, lay siege to Trevisan and block that other route of grain coming into via Asia Minor to the capital. So Nikephorus receives help from David of Tau, 
who supplies him with basically 2,000 soldiers of Georgian and Armenians. And they easily defeat the Magistros Gregory Terranites. Um, this happened on March 2nd of 989. And then the lone soldiers march back home. Um, Basil was sending letters to Delphinus at Chrysopolis to have him withdraw to no avail. Basil had already set in motion to, um, just in case there was a lost cause trying to help Delphinus, you know, come back to the imperial side. What he did is he received a lone army from the Kivian Rus. And what he did was he married off his sister Anna to Vladimir. So this was for him able to receive this aid and not look weak by accepting aid from the Kivian Rus. So he gets like a lone army of 6,000 men. And what they do is they basically do a surprise night attack um, early 989 into Delphinus camp, taking it completely by surprise and completely destroying it. So Basil has the blind Nikephorus in prison and makes an example of Kalo Kairos. Now, sources like Stephen of Tehran and Leo the Deacon state he was crucified by his tent, and a column was erected to serve as a warning to other potential rebels that we talked about earlier. Um, the column, as we talked about earlier, um, did survive in the 11th century. Um, modern scholars such as Holmes and Woodall state he was impaled like another rebel general, Atso Theodorus. Um, that was captured at Abydos on April 1399 when Bardas Focus lost the battle and he lost his life fighting Basil. Um, and that was kind of like a freak thing. He had basically, I guess, had a heart attack and died. Um, Holmes contradicts herself by saying Bardas and Delphinus die at Abydos first, and then he was later, well, first he was impaled and later crucified. So she kind of goes back and forth and then recants and says, oh, wait a minute, which is Bardas that died, Delphinus died at Isopolis. So Skylitzi states Delphinus was hung on the gallows, implying death by hanging. But he too later states that he was impaled. We have to understand this was um, written back in uh, Kona Greek, which is differently translated than modern Greek is. So impaled to them could mean being nailed, like impaled by nails to wood or a beam. We almost think of the way like Vlad the Impaler use this form of punishment when he used to uh, impale his victims through the anus and then out one side of the shoulder. Um, I see no documented cases of impalement ever being used during this century or earlier, but then who knows? I mean, you think it would make it, maybe it did, uh, or maybe it did happen and just surviving documents didn't make it. Um, historian Caldellus made a few good points. He states it appears um, to be ambiguous what Basil did to Delphinus, unlikely that he was hung, though not impossible, but likely that he was impaled like a sharp pole through the diaphragm coming out back in a way that it leaves you suspended there. It could also be that he was crucified, but in practice, crucifixion did not look like the canonical image that we have of the way that Jesus died. So in practice, it looked quite different. Um, since there were different crucifixion styles, and the Romans did learn this from the Persians, so different crucifixion styles are like, example, like a letter T, X, or Y style being impaled, or I'm sorry, impaled, crucified. So it's possibly was impaled, maybe being nailed to this beam of wood to suspend him. Me personally, I am convinced that Kilkaros and that Atsi Potheodorus were both crucified. Um, one other interesting thing I found, it was in the Alexiad, was Anna Komneni writes about Alexios, was leaving a Vlach village called Ezeba close to the Androne, Androne, then goes to Pobitsa by the river Pineos and then through the gardens of Delphinus to Tricala. So it's kind of interesting that there was a garden of Delphinus later on too. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them um, or Anything you need to, that I need to correct, please let me know as well. Thank you.